Hi everyone and welcome back. So now in this video, let's do the remaining part of our payment integration. So uh, currently we are able to make the payment successful. We can also see the logs in the dashboard that all these uh, different events we have processed through the front end and this was created, succeeded, right? This is how we were able to create the payments, right? And uh, when you can just see this is all about uh, the visualization what all different things has happened we have created uh, lots of uh, payments and we are we were doing it with the test card details and you can see integration status currently i'm just doing the test integration and these are all the the payments okay now what we need to do here is we need to define a flow because user might be doing uh, multiple payments if he is not getting the proper status about the payments and all. So what we need to do is whenever we are just integrating with the Stripe only, not with the Google Pay or Pay Paytm and all. So with the Stripe, when you do the payment integration, we need to have an order so that we can associate an order with the payment. Okay, this payment is being made for this order ID and this is successful, this is failed and all. So before even uh, you click on to this button, we need to have an order ID with us or we can create an order on the fly because you can create a multiple orders. Let's say my payment has been failed. So there will be a brand new order if you want to place a new order, right? Because you already have the items in the cart, you can place a new order. So here, create payment intents. Similarly, there will be an API call which will create an order for this particular cart items, right? So there will be two consecutive calls. First, you create an order in the draft status, status and then uh, create a payment intent, which will also create a payment record. So let's do it some proper way. How we are doing it, create payment intent. It is just making this API call. So why do we need a separate interface for it? You can just use this. So, So this is a static async create payment and here we are passing the cart and the config this is simply doing the post to the api to the payment similarly we need to have another service which is create order what order service will do is it will simply create an order with the status whatever the cart menu items we are passing i mean these services are not that big these are very very tiny services order cart and the config create order we we can see what our order service currently doing do we need anything all right so what i will do is currently we have created a payment service so i will just copy the source here order service i will just delete this source and i will replace things inside this so it's an order service so i will be using order order controllers and all order controller because we need to have a history of orders which has been created and order also will tell us so once the order is placed we need to acknowledge the payment deli uh, delivery partner service to to the delivery order dto service order service dot ts for now we will just provide a one interface to create a simple order so this is order service we are not going to have a stripe here So this is order repo and here we are going to have an order entity. This is order entity. Okay. What else uh, we need? So order entity, order service, order controller. Let's change the names. Order service. This API is order. This is order service. This is order controller. Orders authorization. This is a protected API and order create order. 
what create order will do is it is going to create an order in the system with that maybe a draft status before the payment gets processed and payload and all can be same here we are doing create order and we are not using strike here we'll just do a simple repository save so uh do we need to check if uh do we have existing order i think no can just simply say this dot order repo dot uh, save and we can pass the payload so in the payload what all things we have user id that is coming from the user object user dot uid and then we have a restaurant id you can check the order entity we are passing menu items restaurant id user id amount amount we don't need we can calculate the amount that we were doing earlier so this amount same variable we can use amount here we are getting total amount total amount is already there then we have a restaurant id that we are getting from the payload and menu items i think that is the the last argument the new items we have that we can get from payload dot menu items i think that is enough and we are returning it so this is just like a created order will be created order with id will be returned so it's simply create order we are not doing any stripe integration here order entity because we need some uh, some table which can maintain the order history for a particular restaurant for a particular user and here we have a status which is right now not enum so let's say we will just call it as a draft order entity status we have restaurant id user id amount controller create order so it's all exposed through the api v1 order let's make this plural that's uh makes more sense payment services api v1 controller api v1 payments now go to your nginx setup proxy payments api v1 payments similarly we have for orders i think for orders we don't have a proxy so let's give that api v1 orders so currently we don't have many things on the payments and orders these are like uh plain and simple apis the port will be 3006 for the orders you can check that order service dot env 3004 okay are we not using 3004 anywhere no okay so this is 3004 for the order service now going to the order service again order controller i think everything now move to the order service here i can just say this is a order controller this is order controller this is order service this is order service and then this is order entity I need to change the folder names order and this is order entity and this is order entity okay let's use the same names type order module dot four feature db module dot four root this is order controller order service so simple right now i can also spin up this application cd app and we do have order service npm run start dev 
this is talking about order so this is running on 3004 local host 3004 Okay, API even orders and this is how it is taking array as an argument and it will store this JSON object with the restaurant ID and the order menu items. Okay, so we have orders ready. We can create order, associate order ID with the payment service. So in the payment service with this payload, we can also attach an order ID. So this is payment DTO. Here we have menu items, restaurant ID and attach an order id also with this this is a loose foreign key order id okay so what we need to do we need to refactor a little couple of things here inside index we are creating a order we are passing the same payload cart object and the config object API V1 orders, API V1 payment. So let's do this. From here, currently we are resolving this promise. So before that, I can dispatch an action because I need to get the order ID also. So dispatch won't work because on the fly I need to get the order created order ID also. So what is the best way of doing it? I can dispatch two actions. Uh, first action give me the order ID. I mean the simple way is just uh, make this as a nested promise. Like there is another action I have and it's going to be the, the chained promise which I don't want. Otherwise what I can do is just like simple create payment intent. Okay which it should be pointing to here which is create payment so i can just delete this payments file and inside this credit card it should be calling create payment Oh, it's not coming from the XGOs. Okay, we are not exporting it. We need to get this instance of this. I mean, this we are using as a singleton. Is it really a singleton? Because from the constructor, external APIs dot create a payment. Okay. First of all, get the external APIs. then there is a method create payment so this is the api call we are making and then external api this is again you can do dot create order because here also we are passing the same stuff art object and the config object we can make the config object as a global object which we can get uh, here const config config object okay so how can we get the data either we create these as a nested promises or we create this as a async await this is handle submit okay for this we need to make it as a sync will it work on straight out so here we are getting data i think we are already getting response dot data Okay, so it's better if we do it in the await using await, right? Exios.post.
and response dot data similarly here we can do the same thing api given orders response dot data so we are already getting the data object we don't need to destructure it further here uh, it's like order object we are getting and inside this cart we can pass the order id order id we are getting as order dot id it's going to be fun let's see if it works because handle some with dom event i made a sync and we need to show some kind of a loading or some kind of animation whenever all these things are happening these things are not happening through the redux so we are not getting those different state but here we can have a huge state loading or something and can show some kind of a loading so let's see if i do loading that loading true false it's a boolean true sorry uh, initially it is false then you can set set loading true whenever you make an api call so here i will just say set loading true just have to set loading true here also i will just make this set loading true and finally once everything is done set loading false if there is an error set make the set loading false and throw the error or whatever we can do okay so this is going to hit the create order i get the order id i think that order id in the card payment so i'm doing a create payment api v1 payments this is the object i'm passing i'm not worried about typings right now uh, so here in the payment service we have a dto payments dto i'm passing the order id also okay let's see this in the the real picture and there is an error check out credit i put some garbage text let's go to your home page and check out whatever is in the cart And here, let's say I'm doing payment. API given orders not found. That is fine. We need to check API given orders. Okay, I need to restart the front end because I added this, I updated this proxy gateway. Where is this running? npm run start. So after this, uh, we will just do the testing end to end testing. So here uh, I'm just checking if we are getting the order and I'm just passing the order ID in the cart object for creating the payment. Create payment post, and let's go to payment service. There we can also persist this data. This is our payment service. It is a payment service. Inside this, currently we are just returning this, but here with that we can also just persist some of the data because we need to initialize the payment. So what we can do is await this dot payment report dot save, and we can just pass all the payload whatever we are getting so here inside this we get, need to get a user.id and then restaurant.id that is inside payload then we have menu items that we got from the payload dot menu items and order id this order id we need to add this in the entity also for the payment 
order ID. This is the UUID, select true, that's fine. Order ID we are getting from the payload only, payload.order ID. User ID, restaurant ID, menu items, what else? Amount and status, okay? So we can just set amount is we already calculated total amount and status is in progress. These enums we can configure currently because payment uh, he is initiated, it's not done. We already have created an order in the draft and we have initiated a payment for the same. Let's test this. So we click on pay, order payments, order is done, payment is done and we are also storing now in our record and the payment methods, payment method, header, I think I need to change the properties because we are just doing a reoccurring payments, can't read property of undefined client secret okay so this is the this is the failure right i will just reload the page and try to do it again four Okay, it is again complaining the same client secret that means uh, after doing payment the payment service should be returning this client secret and whatever we are getting response.data.clientsecret okay I, I think I got it because we changed the structure how to capture the response that's why so here it should be data dot whatever we are getting inside that you can directly get the client secret because response dot data we are already destructuring in the exios call similarly are we doing anything with the response object this response i'm talking about uh, okay now it should work that's what i think it's uh, inside debugger let's go to the console payment success so here you can see all the the calls the payment first of all orders it has created a new order went to the payments payment require payment method we got the payment method and it, here we got the confirmation and status is succeeded right so this is actually the chain of uh, different calls which executed to perform this whole operation so now we have what all things we have till here we got the the payment record order record created order id created for that order id we have initiated the payment and here we got the success for the payment so here we can actually mark that order id payment succeeded success also so that we can do here update payment for this order id right In, uh, we can use the async await also it's like mix of async await and promises which is to, which, which we need to clean up so here i can just do await first external api dot here instead of create payment i will just do update payment that will be just updating the status of the payment and i will be passing the order id and the payment id let's say here we are passing order id that we already got from order.id and the config object and the user in the restaurant id so let's pass the whole external api this is that we had a create payment so similarly we are going to create update payment All these things are controlled from the UI because everything is revolving around this client, Stripe client. 
update payment in api v1 this is simply put and here we are doing all these things i mean payload is fine we are just going to toggle the status whenever you are doing uh put okay let's go to the component why it is complaining because uh, we are not doing things correctly await create payment So this is update payment. We can look for the promise return from this. If it is successful, then we can just navigate. Navigate to thank you route because the payment status has been updated. Rest of the things will happen asynchronously. So await. This is going to be the sync the hook then. Well, let's keep it as a promise way so here we are doing update payment for this order id update payment status or something like this you can just mark so inside our apis i will just create another method update payment status so this is when you want to just update the payment to the success otherwise you can create a different method update payment status success update payment status failure just pass the params body okay all those things i'm not going to perform here this is simple put call and i am already getting order id in the body so we can play with the body whatever we are getting and this is my payment service this is payment controller i will do a put call with the same parameter with the same body and i will play with the order id and the restaurant id update payment here instead of create we will define one update payment method so inside update payment we will just try to find the existing payment with this order id and restaurant id so what we need to do here is const payment equal to this dot payment repo dot find one based on what uh, where close where we have uh, order id is this uh, payload dot order id and then restaurant id i mean order id is enough because this is what we are going to update if we got the payment if we didn't get the payment then we need to throw new not found exception if everything is good then we will just say pay payment dot status okay payment dot status done payment dot status equal to successful and await uh, what we can do is await payment dot save this is what we can return that's it so update payment is mapped with the same api v1 payments and everything we are passing in the payload this is create payment and this is update payment so this is put and this is going to call update payment and we are good so from our front end this is a credit card component uh, here we are going to update the payment status once it is done we can just navigate to the thank you so what will do what it will do because payment apis are not this much here we are going to plug in a, a nestjs microservice client that will emit an event and that will update the order status to success order status let's say here you are saying that payment is succeeded payment status is success that means we need to status we need to send a notification or asynchronous message to the order service saying that uh, payment has been made you just update the order status to placed and then assign the delivery partner okay so let's do this again here i am going to buy some more things
so it it currently has the same uh, same card component either we can clear the card from the apis whenever we are done with the payment so i will do the checkout and then i also need to see what is happening i will select the address address is not being passed right now that i know we also need to populate the address id with our order so here what happens there is some error that's why this stripe interface is not being loaded let's reload the page now let's inspect our api calls it should be 42 to 6 and uh, let's see our network tab so we got order payments and, uh, where is the dsk because You can move it down. So in the network tab, you can see the payments. And finally, this is the confirmation and this is the payments, which is updating the payment status to success. So we are good. The whole flow, end-to-end -end flow, we are able to achieve through simple Stripe interface. Creating the order, passing the order to the order ID to the payment. Payment uh, is made through the Stripe. Payment is successful. Then redirecting and updating the payment status to the success so now we can acknowledge the order service to do the order delivery as order has been updated to ordered like order placed because i have done the payment okay now uh, let's see what other things we can do uh, with the existing implementation i will open our ui Okay, if our application is running. So what we are doing, we need to select the address here. So how we can do it? Uh, because we are showing the set of addresses and we also have this method select address. And we have the address slice. I mean, the user slice is already there that we can use to get the selected address ID. So here these are all uh, all asynchronous and here we can also have one synchronous action same as like this so here we can see the reducer so we can see select address inside a user slice all the synchronous actions will go here so here i can say is select address and can populate address in my selected address state action action dot payload what is my current address current state and here i can have selected address is null and once we have what i can see do is selected address is action dot payload and selected address select address this is the action I can export this so export const select address equal to address slice so the user slice dot actions right so select address you can dispatch passing the payload so that I will do here in the checkout page select dispatch select address and I will just pass the address object it's like quite simple right this is how we can populate in the redux the selected address okay so i will do the checkout and i will play with my current redux state so i will go to the user addresses right selected address is currently null now when i click on to any of these Add new is different here. Let's say I'm 
clicking deliver here okay something is wrong looks like i made some mistake so let's try to click on to this what is happening here is oh man something uh, i did some mistake let's say let's try to fix that check out to tsx30 okay it's calling again and again that's uh, the problem is select address okay i have the same name everywhere that's the problem select user address and i will just replace this select user address and then select address this should be fine now select address we can import sometimes you don't know right the same variable uh, or function name you put and you will see what is happening so i can select this and what it will do is in the redux state we should have our state populated sometimes it gets stuck i will reload this redux dev tool to the right inspect let me open the dev tools So when you click on to this what we are doing we are selecting the address somehow the dev tools are works showing some weird behavior i don't see the redux dev tools showing up anywhere synthetic base event let's see so here what we are doing is select address this we are dispatching and select address uh, is handled by this select address state and action action dot payload are we doing something wrong i don't think here we are just passing action dot payload and this is a user slice select addresses So when I try to dispatch this, what would happen? Okay, there's something wrong. React on click target, click native event, serializable. So here select address we are exposing and dispatch. Okay, I think I got it. This is select user address. We are getting the address object because that is an event object, right? We cannot just pass the event object. I was doing a very silly mistake here because what I was doing is when you are passing, so here if you are passing something that can be only the event object, right? This inside this arrow function. Now it should work as expected. I can reload the page and here not sure why my redux dev tools are not showing up properly I could have shown how the dev tools look like or I need to restart the tab so here when you click on it this we can actually highlight also that this particular address we have selected in the selected address and we can format this a uh, little bit better so i restarted my browser and now i can see the selected address so we just need to so here in the address object you can see state dot user dot selected address this based on the id we can just uh, highlight this particular section with particular border when you click on it so we know that user has selected this particular address and we can send this order uh, this address id in the order while creating the order because this order is going to be delivered to this order id which uh, this delivery partner can fetch once he receives this particular event 
so I just did some cleaning of data and uh, put uh, some styling like flex column flex full and border to when you are selecting and so this is a flex vertical column layout here you can see display flex and then inside this we have these individual IDs that is width full justify center flex column padding 2 okay so here this is how we are selecting the address so we already have having the selected address ID with us now the selected address ID we can populate is here you can see selected address ID this we can pass while creating the order so we need to update a few things so here is our order service inside our DTO order DTO what we are taking as an input is let's see this is menu items restaurant ID and then we have address ID this is of type string this is a UUID and if it is UUID then you don't need to specify its string this validation is more than enough address ID we need to store in the entity also of type UUID okay this is address ID so this is coming from the DTO and we need to update our front end to pass this so we already getting the selected address object swiggy app and then here inside of our pages checkout component so here we are doing lots of things here we will just use that selector so in the pages checkout here we are passing few things like uh, selected address and selected address here we are getting using selected selected address so let's go to our payment here we are passing the card we can also pass the address if you want selected address and we can access this inside this and this address can be passed this address id i'm saying so address id i know this code is not that uh, nice design by design because here we are doing lots of things in this just a small section so here we are doing create address and inside this we are just passing all the payload i can just run the the prettier on the whole project let's say if uh, it is able to format something so here we are passing create uh, payment and passing the cart object order id and address id so address id now we have started taking as an input so we will be passing the cart object and the config that is a promise so we are passing order id address id so in the in the order service we already getting the order address id like that, that this is the selected address we need to pass and here we are updating the payment status directly so i mean this is can be designed in different ways so here payment service you are doing uh, update payment status which is just updating the payment status to be successful there can be two different uh, ways of doing it it can be successful or it can be failure because it's not necessary that uh, it's always going to be uh, successful right so here this is what we are going to do if it is a failure then also we are going to update payment status failed update payment status success now there's a difference we are doing in the service update payment status success update payment status another we can do is failure so we are in the checkout credit card and this is another method 
we'll go to our APIs and there is another method update status failed and inside we are passing the cart object so how we deal with this object now okay so here we are passing the status so what we can do is this is a put call we can pass the status only status is failure and here status is success so we need to update the DTO like for put call you will be getting just only partial update so we will go to the payment service go to the DTO and here uh, instead of create we are just passing the update and we are allowing you to pass the status right so what we can do is I can just allow you to pass me the status as a property so this is a status which can be enum for now like it, it can be simple enum which can be success and failure so status we are allowing in the update DTO we'll go to the controller payment controller and here instead of create we will just using the update which is the extension of the create and here update payment status instead of this we are passing the update and not found exceptions this status and here inside from the payload we can get the status and status we are saving so if it, it can be success it can be failure this is all about the payment now if the payment is a success right then we have to do a couple of things we have to emit an event or emit a event to the order service or let's say based on our design we created a listener service we wanted to create a listener service which can listen to all these internal uh, service events so what we will do is we will create a listener service I will create a copy of this so this is event listener service and this is going to be a MQ service which is going to listen to a rabbit MQ and uh, I mean it's a nest just microservice at the payment service we are going to create uh, this listener service client and we will just send a message to the RabbitMQ on a particular queue and this event listener service will respond to that event listener service will listen to the events on a particular queue and then it will update a data this is what we have designed so let's say if it is listening for payment events so payment event listener service order listener order event listener service something this is how we can design our services event listener service okay let's design this as an STS microservice so let's build a microservice here I created this event listener service this is going to use a RabbitMQ as a broker so for that what we need to do is we need to create update our docker compose YML and we need to add a RabbitMQ so here instead of that we will have one more that will is rmq this is the rmq listener image is rabbitmq3 management alpine not needed and then docker compose override rabbitmq listener this is docker compose override here what we needed is the whole RabbitMQ service container which we can put over here for RabbitMQ image we can skip container name and container name we have already placed in our docker compose file this is override container name is also not required port and the volume mapping let's say if I do docker compose up now this is RabbitMQ and I can just do docker compose up it should be able to pull this image RabbitMQ3 management alpine and once it is done it will just have the docker, docker container running for RabbitMQ 
and then we will create to we will create a client in our service payment service and we will create a next just service so if we look this is the listener service okay and this is the payment service so payment service here we are going to create a simple client so we are going to use a nest.js microservices first of all this module needs to be added wherever we are using it so payment service open in the integrated terminal and i will just do pm pm add nest.js microservice okay cd apps cd payment services and i'm just saying pm pm add next year services and same thing i will do in uh, event listener service so here event listener service pnpm add next year microservices and let's go to our root module this is source app app module okay here what we need we need to have this transport and clients module and here we are going to register client module if there is something called inside imports we can define so we are importing domain module terminus module and here we are creating the client client module dot register let's say hello service instead of that payment listener service payment listener service and this is going to be the host and port of the rabbit and queue and let's say this is the payment messages is the queue name looks like we missed something this is the options client module dot register okay simple client module we have registered here this way i guess you can register multiple clients if you want to send a message to the different queue like payment queue order queue or something you can keep adding this and this is how you are creating you are registering the client instance for your application now what you will do in your uh, services you will inject this payment listener service and will send a message so let's see uh, how we are doing it we have created this listener instance and now with the help of this listener instance we should be able to emit a event to the rabbit mq so we can see our container is up and running and this is the place where we are creating client I mean, we will inject the payment listener service in our controller or service and we will be able to emit the events first of all let's see the management client you need to go to this port 15672 are we exposing this in our override 15672 port and here i think it's guest this is simple rabbit thank you right and it can see i mean how would we see the channel exchange queues queues we need to create we can add a new queue like uh, payment messages add queue here order messages add queue and make notification messages maybe a couple of more queues based on our needs right right now i am looking for payment messages so i will be using this queue and i will be using this in my client my client will be sending the event to the payment messages and we are just using guest and guest username password okay here this is our domain right and this is the payment this is controller and service so here we can inject this payment service how are we injecting is simple we can just inject using inject hello service like whatever the, your service name is so inject and your service name inject 
inject let's import the inject from next just common and here inside domain module uh, inside app module i think we should do it in the domain module that's more appropriate option client module dot register and here i'm doing it client module we just import nest.js microservice and transport same from nest.js microservice and this is payment listener service we are injecting inside our payment service inject payment listener service private read only private read only this is the client instance of type client proxy okay and we are going to use this client instance to send a message so here we are updating the status right so what we can do is here we can send this event this dot client dot emit emit the event of type any and here i can send the event like payment uh, status update payment updated let's say this is the event name and here you will be just sending a message and inside message i'm just going to send an object which contains the order id and the payment status order id which i'm getting from the payload dot order id and status we are already getting right so status is payload dot status so this is the event we are emitting to the payments payment queue from this client so we are we have created this client for the kafka uh, sorry rabbit mq and now we need uh, the listener microservice which is listening uh, and uh, which is going to read this message and act on it right this is what we are going to do okay so we are already have this event listener service what we will do is we will do some changes on this first of all we need to install some required modules if we look into the nest.js documentation we will install some required modules we need to install these uh, on our listener service so i will go inside listener service open in the integrated terminal npm add emqb lib emqb connection manager and here we are going to create the service so instead of inside this main.ts we are doing app.listen but here the app instance will be created differently for the app instance we will be using something different so this is the server await nest factory nest, nest microservice option that we can import transport and all these things will come from there this is not going to be like okay some http rest uh, interface so it's going to be simple uh, microservice nestjs microservice listening to the rabbit mq so here what we are saying is uh, we are creating the server we need to import this microservice service option okay or oh, it's not adding that we need to import add nest.js okay and we can get the service options from the nest.js microservice microservice options okay and then what we are doing is await app.listen To some port okay we don't need to worry about the port because here this is not a http server console.log listener service is working service is running what happened here
okay that's fine so here we have created this service localhost 5672 this is our url so but uh, if you look at the exact url you need to provide the whole urls and we are looking for what is the queue which we are using for the client proxy we need to use the same domain module payment messages this is our listener service app module main.ts queue name is this durable false okay so what this service contains i mean we don't need to worry about having controllers because it's not going to be using the rest interface right it is just going to listen to these events and at the controller level we need to use a particular annotation to listen to these asynchronous events coming from the client okay so let's update our controllers okay so let's see we have lots of code here which we can remove because what we need is app module okay this is the main.ts app service is fine module domain module do we need all these things because what we need is just a simple controller and maybe one service so we are we are good to have just a app controller app services docs we don't need because it's not going to expose anything on the swagger app controller this is health but okay app module we don't have a domain module anywhere this is app module and here this is app service app controller okay so how we are going to handle the the event coming we don't need to worry about controller path and all app controller let's say this is the app controller this uh, okay this, these are all the things also not needed terminus module and all here we will be looking for one particular uh, event type right so how we handle that in a listener service is we will look for this particular event pattern and what these are the event pattern which we are looking for at the listener service so what is the event name if you look into our center service which is generating the events here we are calling payment updated or uh, let's put a proper name is payment status updated right this is the event which we are sending so this listener service inside app controller payment status updated and here we can just try to log this particular event and we will just pass this app controller to our app module controller service okay app service is now having nothing right now and this is our main.ts inside main.ts we are just bootstrapping our module listening to the rabbit mq and we are looking for all these kind of events at the controller level now later what we will do is we will also have a services which will deal with this data and will update our uh, let's say data in the database for that in app module we are going to use a db module dot register terminus module we don't need so here we are going to do the db module dot register and all for now let's see if uh, it works right so we are passing everything we can just start this application using npm run start event listener service let's update this here event listener and go to nx console this nx console is not uh, happy today let's go to apps and because we have lots of application and it keeps loading where am i right now event listener service npm run uh, start dev So I'm starting the service. Okay, connection to the transport failed. Trying to reconnect. Okay, that is uh, we need to debug and let me start the the client. Is the client already running? Which is the payment service? The payment service also there. Also we are not checking uh, if the client connection has established before sending the event. Let's see CD apps cd minus cd apps cd payment service npm run start dev 
payment service is already running okay here already it's in consumption let's see where the payment service is running we can restart it so at the client side also we can check the the event i mean the connection has established before even sending the event so how we do it on module in it we can do so this is a payment service go to your payment service and here this dot client dot connect so there is a method implements on in it this is a lifecycle method with this lifecycle method you need to implement the init method on module init and here we can just check this dot client proxy dot connect i think this is the method so if it is able to connect then that is fine otherwise it will uh, throw an error right this dot client dot connect i think this is the method which i remember so we need to see okay this is this should be a promise based await this dot client dot connect and now this is going to be the async method async on module init okay that means to me is it has started otherwise it would have if it is let's say if it should be rapid inside try catch if there is an error while connecting we can just log for now and see if there is any connection error to doing a client connect okay connection open okay got connection channel zero some error right unexpected connection let's debug this and try to figure it out okay so i figured out the issue issue is uh, in the management so what you need to do you need to look at this carefully what we are doing so first of all if you go to the queues we need to have all the queues already created whatever we are going to communicate on and here in the virtual hosts what changes i'm doing is we need to create a new virtual host admin let's say i can create an admin as a new virtual host for the same user which you are using in the url and you need to use admin as the url so here you can see emqp guest username password local host port and this is your virtual host name so admin is something which i have created and inside payment services i am using domain module and admin is a virtual host and now in the payment service when we are doing uh, the this dot client proxy dot connect we are not getting any errors i can just save this so i'm talking about the payment service where is this running okay, here i can just save it and it's not breaking that means uh, we are connected through the client and there is an event listener service that is also connected and not showing any error that means event listener service is also listening for the events coming now uh, what we need to do we need to play with the events so how we can push the events through the the client which is payment service and this is our payment controller here we are doing the update status let's see uh, we will be doing end-to-end -end test maybe it will work or it may not work because we have done lots of changes there may be some issue but this is the payload we are passing the order id and the status which is failed or success so let's check this application end-to-end -end. so i will go to my front end and what i will do is i will first uh, remove stuff from a cart there can be a method which can help you to just remove everything from your cart okay for now let's add few more 500 okay i will do the checkout and here i will select a particular address let's say i have selected this address right and i will just enter the same go to this is cvc and 
and here i need to see if everything is being passed or not otherwise we would be in trouble okay we got gateway timeout for the order service bad response okay mm, we need to see what is happening with the order service localhost api v1 orders okay is the order service running that's the good question no order service no it had some issues order contains null values okay yeah that is expected because i added the address or add address id in middle of uh, when the table already has the data uh, we are not taking care of migrations properly we are just updating the entities and populating that data so let's keep this as optional address id type uuid uh, you can just set default null that will allow you to have the null values also in the order service for the address id now i can just click on to this again it is creating orders now 400 expected are we missing something address id must be a uuid what are we passing we are not even passing deliver here i mean i should be selecting this now when i click on to this 400 order id is missing okay let's fix that we know the fix for this so we'll go to our front end apps swiggy app source components okay check out card and here this is the place where we are passing the order id address id what is attribute name address id must be a uuid i mean we are not even passing that right now so this is address should be coming in the your checkout component which is being passed from your checkout page because this is a selected address and selected address will always be there this is what we are using selected address selector this is an object so let's see what is missing here we are updating a selected address based on the payload okay we'll go to the checkout credit component and try to just uh, console.log and we will see what we are getting here so i'm getting cart object and console.log or we will just debug this part what data we are getting in the address so uh, we'll just reload this page and here this looks like your cart object and this is coming as null that's strange okay so check out credit uh, let's see our code here in your checkout page this is where we are sending this property as a prop address uh, selected address object which can be null but when it is coming we should be passing it selected address are we fetching the addresses here on the top uh, we are fetching the fetch address okay so that means when we get the updated burden so this is little strange is it coming in the redux state selected address is null so when you reload i need to click on one selected address that is fine i clicked on it now i'm getting address id so now this looks nice we are getting the address id now when i click on to this pay should be passing the address id but why it's not getting that okay that's an important thing because i'm getting the address object till here So this is my address are we overriding it through some property address.id this is the cart object create payment okay uh, 
this is the mistake I again did, right? Here I need to pass this address ID in the cart object, not in the payment object while doing the payment. That was the mistake. And I was just trying to debug this, right? Stupid mistake again. So here what we need to do, we are passing the cart object. Okay, so inside this I can just say my existing cart object property and address ID. So create this so we are passing the cart object. Now I can try this. I will select an address and I will do the payment. So cart has done, payment is uh, happening. Confirm broken, right? Incompatible payment method. Okay, and on the failure, we should not be doing this. So there is a payment method failure. We'll go to our app. And let's try again. It's all debugging we are doing. So let's go do and check out. We are selecting an address. We are done. Here, let's add the card information. 24 okay and uh, do the payment so confirm payments updated okay everything is done right even you can see i am able to update the status to success so end to end flow is done so first orders it has created order with this uh, restaurant id and uh, this is the payload address ID I'm passing and I'm creating payment then payment method then confirm updating the payment with the success status and my payment status has been updated and now we will see what is happening with our listener service so this is payment service event listener service this is payment service and then there should be event listener service node Yes, this is what I was expecting. I can see the events coming, right? Status success. From where it is coming? Because we are emitting the event from the payment service. This is my payment service. App module. Through this uh, payment service. I mean, too much nesting. Here I'm just sending this event. Message event. Uh, okay, and then there is an event listener service. This is listening to these events. In the controller and I got the data and data contains a status success I should be passing the order ID also I need to find where the order ID is but at least my event whatever I, I emitted one event and that event has passed so I should be seeing something on the my queues so I was talking about the payment message queues here we did send one message there is already one consumer attached to it right that is listening to the message queue, pay payment messages, right? There is a listener already attached to this. And here you can publish message. We cannot see the history of the messages which has been drained, but we got one message pushed. You can see the channel and byte message and some overview. Once you, you push lots of messages, then you can see something, some graph happening here. Where this is how the event is being sent. Now uh, we can just debug uh, simple things why this uh, the whole payload is not being passed. Here what we are passing is inside payment service order play pay payload dot order ID. Yes, this, that is not a part of payload first of all because we are not passing the order ID in the payload. So that we need to start sending. That is the mistake we are doing from the swiggy app source api service here we are constructing the payload i can just pass the whole uh, load which is cart object and you will start getting the order id and based on the order id you are just sending the events to the 
listener micro service right so this is how and now this listener service is going to access the database order database and it is going to update the order status to uh, to placed and then we are going to initiate a delivery using order delivery service so this is this is all fun we are doing so let's see in the next video we are going to send a proper message and this listener service is going to have a connection with the databases and doing these updates